say look out, boy, I be smoking like a putt putt. See me on the pass by, and them eyes be shut shut. If you on them guards, or they woo, or they snuff snuff, I snortin' that dust dust. Bitches all love love. Who are you to judge us? I'm just trying to keep me some guards, so I can roll the sticky and go way past the stars. My creativity takes me way past Mars. So if Jupiter make me stupid, I'm trying to raise the bar, man. Do you feel me though? Lost a couple people, but still winning though. Left to keep from crying like a senior yo. Mary Jane and Hanson in my indigo. Without it, I'll be lost and don't know when to go. She lets me know when evil is lurking. Are you friend or foe? Bitch, I see through you like a glass clock. And it's about time for me to spam spot. Bare face, mask off. Cross me, that's your last route. Pants down. Bet against the key, you gon' be assed out. Bet I'm gon' be last out. Girl, you better watch the way you rapping. And if you running up, you better watch the way you stepping. My pen game mean, and with age come progression. Me, sugar, and Come to school, you gotta listen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Welcome back to Unpopular Honesty, the home of brutal honesty and real hip hop music. And today, my guest on the line, uh, I'm gonna attempt to do an intro. Uh, she has greatness within her. And the reason why I say that is because when I look at her, I see shades of MC light. That fear and intimidation sets it. in with both men and women when she steps behind the microphone and also she has lauren in her because she can spit with the best of them and then give you vocal compliment on the side and if you don't know who i'm talking about i'm talking about kiki d how are you hey doing? i'm good i'm good and that means a lot coming from you bro because listen you've been doing this for a long time so the, the 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 first shout out I want to give to you for even giving back to, you know, to the area. Like this is this is really big. This is really big. So I definitely appreciate you. You Thank definitely you. a jewel. Thank you. Um, let's go back to the beginning. When did this musical odyssey start for Kiki D? You know what? I don't even remember when I just all the way started doing. I know I always did poetry, and I had this friend uh, that I grew up with. Um, her name is Bernice or whatever. I'm going to just put it out there. And um, she go by the name of Sojourner Truth on Facebook. And she's a poet. And when I have to tell you, like, one of the dopest poets I know. And I grew up under her. So that's who helped me with my wordplay. So it, I was I started off as a poet under her. And then music just kind of just, you know, went hand in hand. Like, she really just sharpened me. Yeah. So shout out to her. She got a book getting ready to come out as well. Oh yeah, no doubt. Um, so <clears throat> she helped sharpen your wordplay, and then you were still rapping at school, if I'm not mistaken, right? Yes, yes, that was the days. I loved it. I had uh, a lot of y'all know him. I call him Carrie. That's my bro. Uh, y'all know him as Ill Tactics, and we started out. We had a group together, and uh, he was banging on the table with the spoons and forks, and he was the best beat man. And this brother would beat on the table and spit. So we started out together. So yeah, we used to we used to be on them freestyle sessions in the patios and you know and stuff like that. Yeah, we used to get it pumping in the in the cafeteria. <laughs> yeah. And then after <laughs> that, um was that when you got with my cousin Reggie with Ghost Town? I did. I did. That's around that time or whatever. Shout out to Ghost Town. Reggie uh King Cross uh City Slick uh, the whole AAMP, Sugar Cane, them and them boys or whatever. Uh, yes, that's when we all linked up. And that's and a, it was it was up from there. And that's the period that I met you in. Now, that is the period. <clears throat> yes, yes. Now, from that yes, point on, flowed. you went to you was making records by yourself, but uh -huh. I gotta ask you because you work with my brother. How was uh -huh. how was it working with Big E? Oh, man, it was a pleasure working with Big E. And you learn so much. Like, he would give you good constructive criticism. Um, and it was just always a good vibe. And the time we went up another go record, it wasn't even just all about recording. Sometimes we'll just have just good sessions where we up and up just chopping it up, you know, just on some real on some real stuff. So I, I definitely enjoyed every moment with Big E. It was a pleasure all, all the time. Right. And then after that, I mean, was you supposed to put out something like a mixtape or a project after yes. that period? But yes, I I was I was I was supposed to put something out, and then I had a, a few life events 
or whatever took place or whatever. And then, um, I, you know, I just kind of put myself um, in a position to where I had to choose motherhood. Right. And that's just really all it was. I had to choose because, you know, this music thing, this it's a way of life. It's not it's not something that you just say, oh, okay, today I'm going to start rapping. That's a way of life. So if you got kids, you got to have a babysitter. You got to have people to watch them kids. If you're on tour, that's where you're getting your money. You got to be able to do that. And I chose motherhood. And that's, that's all it is. That's all it is. So and, I didn't get a chance to put out those projects. And that's real. You know what I'm saying? But, yeah. I mean, yeah. you still here, so it's still a possibility. But we work, yeah, we working our way up to, to now. Uh, after this period, uh, when did you start making records with uh, Forty Nina? Forty Nina, this was so crazy. Okay, so we ended up doing the cipher. So they had a, a rose gold. Rose gold came up with a cipher. They had this little thing going on in Facebook. They was like, "I'm the best rapper. I'm the best rapper." Everybody saying they was the best rapper. So this was all the ciphers and stuff going on. So rose gold pulled me in on a cipher, and um, when he pulled me in on the cipher, and the cipher came out, that's when I met Player Music, R.I.P. Rest his soul. That's my that's my bro. I met Player Music, and Player Music thought that it would be a good idea for me, him, and Rose Gold to form a group, which was for Nina. At first, I was kind of hesitant about it because I had to put the microphone down all before the cycle. So uh, when I decided to pick the microphone back up, I was like, okay, well, we can do this. And when I tell you, we had so much fun recording that album. It was so much fun. And I truly, and it just reminded me of why I love music in the first place and why I love doing it. And um, that's what brought me back. Yeah, I mean... Because for someone in your position who had to choose motherhood, you know, rather than going full steam with the music, a situation like 40 Nina kind of worked out in your favor because it's not like you were solely responsible for the entire album. Right, right. You, exactly. You just, exactly. You just played an important role in the exactly. album. Exactly. And, you know, I listened to it through and through. And I was like, shit, um, that shit is classic. I said it then, you know what I'm saying? But When I tell you, we had so much fun, Bread, recording that album. We have, me and Rose go, we laugh all the time. We share different videos and pictures that we took when we was in there recording. When I tell you, it was a family. It was a family. And we just really en enjoyed recording that album. And um, we have so many uh, memories with uh, play of music. So many pictures and videos and stuff, you know, and it's and we're gonna keep his memory alive. Well, That's what we're gonna do. Talk about player music because that was somebody who um I also knew and I was cool with. Uh maybe I wasn't close as you you were, but right. I was cool with him and I, I had the opportunity to work with him, you know what I'm saying, and I know what he meant to the area. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And it's and, and, and it's it's his his beats, his beats was just so gravitating. It was so gravitating, and then when he made these beats, and you could tell they was from the heart. They was they was his heart on them beats, you know. So he made all them different beats, and even his lyrics. The brother didn't curse. You can't pull a one play of music verse with a curse word in it, and he demanded your attention with no curse words. It's, it ain't too many artists that could do that, you know. So I was yeah. just I was just blown away. That's one of the things that blew me away about him. Yeah. So yeah. a, so after the forty Nina period, uh, was there a plan to put on put out some music from you solo wise or no? You just kind of absolutely. I've actually been working on something. I've been working on something, and it should be out uh by the end of this year. Um, I've been working. I just got a few finishing touch ups or whatever to do it. Um, I've been also working on the book. I've been working on merch. Like I've been pretty much kind of having my hand in everything. So yeah, definitely be on the lookout for me. I'm being quiet, but I'm I ain't making no noise, but I'm making some moves. Just know that. That's what's up. This this project that you're talking about, is it more in the vein of miseducation of Lauren Hill or are we going? You, you know, I I, I kind of tapped into uh kind of like the new wave because I was like, I need to be uh I need to you know expand my horizon and stuff or whatever because a lot of things. You know, we make we make a lot of music, and it might be good music, but it might not necessarily be marketable. And that's what we really want to be. So we can make music all day long for the music community, and only the music community will appreciate it. But if you want that sound, that marketable sound, you got to give the people what they want. So I did try to tap in, but I'm still me. 
I'm right. still me on that thing, but I did tap in to the new wave. Well, I can tell you right now that I, I want to hear it, you know, off the rip. Oh, know, yeah, definitely, 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 but, definitely. Uh, I got you, bro. But since we talk, we need to get together. We need to get together and do something. Do some yeah, because I actually, yeah, I'm not going to say it now, but I got some shit up my sleeve. But uh, Oh, I'm already knowing. <laughs> you a big <laughs> man. <laughs> what I was going to ask you was um, this new era of music, because we come from an era that is totally different. And uh, how do you feel about this new era of music? You know how I feel about it? I just feel like the old folks wasn't really messing with our music when we was coming out. So, and then now, and and they didn't understand us. They didn't understand us. They didn't try to understand us. I don't want to be that older person that didn't understand the youth and didn't try to understand the youth. Because as you know, I have, I have kids. Right. I have a 16 year old. I have a seven, I have a 16 year old and I have an 18 year old. So I have to relate to them and they're all, they're also musically inclined. So we look at, we on the lookout for music from them as well. Wow. So, uh, yeah. So I had to tap in, I had to tap in, in in the young era and they keep me in line. They let me know, mama, that ain't, that ain't it. That's not what we doing. We ain't doing it no more. You know, so they, they give me constructive criticism and, and likewise, I understand. you know, so we sharpen each other. I understand what you're getting at from a parent standpoint, because I do have a son and he's about to be nine, but it's it's totally different because right me and his mother thank god we had a chance to sit down and have a long discussion and the right. discussion was mainly about what he sees and what he hears right and she basically was like you know me um you know I come from a generation of, you know, her mother put her on real music. So she know what right. real music is. Just like right. my era and my generation put me on real music. So I know mm-hmm. what real music is. So we both collectively decided that it's certain things he won't indulge in. Right. Because right. it's damaging. Right. Right. And uh, right. I agree. I agree 100%. You know what I'm saying? Like, nah. Understanding the times, yes, that is important. Understanding mm-hmm. the younger generation from a parent standpoint, very right. important. But mm-hmm. the music, mm-hmm. well, I wouldn't say I'm not saying that to say that I'm talking about what they're talking about because I'm definitely I don't represent that. I'm talking about more of a sound. Yeah. More of a sound. If I did a certain sound or I picked out a certain beat, you know, or something like that or whatever, then they kind of let me, "Hey mama, like this is this is what hot, this is what's not hot, this is that." I'm talking about more along the lines of that. Yeah. Not about I, because at the end of the day, I'm still going to be me. I still have to represent, you know, at the end of the day I have a, I have an image to uphold. You know, and a lot of people say you shouldn't be concerned about what people think about you and your image or whatever. But I am a person, uh, I would like to be able to differ because your image has everything to do with it. It depends on whether you're going to drive off the lot with that car. It depends on if you're going to get this house, if you're going to get this job position, if you're going to get whatever, you're going to get this deal. I'm, I'm real big on my image. So, yeah, so I'm definitely not going to be something that I'm not. But I definitely want to make sure that... um. I'm still relevant when it comes to my sound. And this that's where they kind of sharpen me in as mm. far as sound is concerned. But I'm still gonna have substance because that's just in me to do that, you know? Right. I get that. I mean, I, I yeah. had to deal with some with some sound uh things too, because it was certain things I'm not willing to do. But right. I understand that <clears throat> it's a way that you can adopt some of this new sound and put it into what you're doing and it doesn't compromise what you're doing. Exactly. And this and this all I've and this all I've been um mastering is that because I still want to be me. I still want to be me. So I'm still going to be me uh you know regardless yeah. at the end of the day. But I don't want to sound uh outdated. So to speak. Well, I got to ask you these questions because they the most wanted <laughs> questions uh ever. Does Kiki D have a top 5? Uh male or female? Uh we could start with the males and then we could do females. So it's the top 5 of all or or today? Top 5 all time. Oh man, listen. 
you know I'm gonna have to I gotta say I gotta say Pac. I have to say Pac. I'm sorry. I do. I yeah. grew up on Pac. I love Pac. So I'm gonna have to definitely say that. Um but I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you something. That dang on J. Cole speaks to my soul. I because definitely love I love hard. J. Cole. I love um uh, I love the message that he uh put out. And um and C Lo Green. CeeLo Green. Uh let's see, I got two more. Uh I would have to say I love Luda. I love Luda. Luda is uh his flow is so uh lucrative and mm. stuff. Um uh, and you know what? Uh, I think that Luda, and this is not an insult, I think y'all kind of run a tight race. You and Luda. That's why I love your music so much. Cause when you put out that that ladies' room, oh man, I was like, this brother. Wow. This brother got it. I've never heard that comparison, but thank you. Man, it, it was it was their vibe. It was their vibe. And that was before Luda was even, you know, right. You know, they're relevant. And I tell people that, like, even when they talk about Luda, I'm like, man, I got a homeboy that hey, they can get Luda rough. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I got one more. Uh let's see. I would have to say Lauren. I love Lauren. I love Lauren. Mm. And that's and that's my top five. Nah, you said you was gonna do females top five. Oh yeah, you're right. You're right. You're right. <laughs> you're right. <laughs> well, I would have to say, uh, okay, so Lauren that'll be one of my females. Uh I can't think of nobody else at this time. And look, as soon as we hang up, I'm probably think of somebody else. That's all I can think of for now though. Mm. It's for them. But really? for the females, I definitely would have to say Lauren. I would have to say uh, Missy. I love Missy. I like uh, 3D Nati. I don't think she get enough recognition. She don't. She don't. Uh, Snow the product don't get enough recognition. Shauna don't get enough recognition. No, she doesn't. Yeah. So I would have to say that. And um, yes. I was going to ask you, what do you think about the trajectory of female rap going forward because right now I feel like outside of Rhapsody and a few other female, real female MCs in the world, female rap is kind of stuck in the mud. Right. They stuck in one little mode, one little set content, one thing. Because it, wor it works for them. It works for them. And that's that's it. That's cool if it works for you, but if it works for you, <laughs> it works for you. But but it's like, what message are you putting out? I got you. Yeah, because I got you. At, I the, got you. at the end of the day, this and this is something that I know I'm gonna have to sit down and eventually have to talk about with my son because yeah, he's gonna go out in the world and he's gonna come across the period poos. He's going to come across the <laughs> ratchets. He's going to come across the city girls. He's oh going to, you know, uh, and, and I have to tell him, hey, son. That's not it. That's not it. <laughs> Please don't come home with that. Please don't insult yourself by getting close to that. Uh, Understand well, that, you know, just, I, and that's just I, being I, honest. I just feel like this. I feel like uh, it's... <laughs> It is a it's, it's a huge change. Um, it's a I think it's all about uh and, and the big picture of it all is it's a women's movement. Women are wanting to be recognized, women are wanting to be treated equal. Like this is this has been a fight for quite some time. So I I, I guess they kind of feeling like, well, shoot, if dudes could do this and dudes could say this, then we can too. So I don't think it's necessarily like a right thing. I don't think it's right. And I don't think it's wrong. I think it just depends on your perception, but I can't throw stones at them people. If this is, if that's the way that they feel now, that's not the way that I'm going to represent myself. And that's not the way that I would like for my daughters to represent themselves. And of course I'm going to steer them in a different direction, but I can't throw stones at those people because that's what works for them. If that makes sense. Yeah, I understand what you mean. I mean, yeah, I'm just, it makes sense. Yeah. I'm just looking at the message, and I'm looking at the effect of, you know, when we was coming up, they love this generation loves to compare 
their generation to mine. So they, what, and they they take they still love music too, Brad. Like they they taking the music and remixing it. Well, they gotta <laughs> they gotta they gotta go back to real music because this new shit ain't working for them. It ain't. <laughs> you know what it I'm ain't. saying? And so I I look that look at that as a form of flattery. But right, yeah. I've heard somebody make this comparison. They they love to say, "Well, your generation had Lil Kim," and I say, "Yeah, but the difference back then was." Girls wasn't trying to be like Lil Kim when Lil Kim came out. Right. Matter of fact, a lot of girls right. couldn't openly listen to Lil Kim. They had to sneak and listen to it. Right. You know what I'm saying? And it, and she was talking about some wild stuff, making Sprite cans disappear in her mouth and things of that nature. Oh, God. But, yeah, Lil Kim was doing the most. <laughs> but wasn't nobody in the streets trying to do that. No. I don't well, remember that. Brent, I, let me tell you, though. You don't know what them people was doing behind closed doors now. Now, see, let me tell you, some of those people they they quick to judge, but then they go behind closed doors and they end up doing the trying to pull them same tricks, honey. Right. So you, you'll be surprised. So I th- I just think that the female generation today, they're not about hiding it. And our generation, we were a little more classier. I have to say that we were ladies in the streets and we were freaks in the sheets. But these girls here, they 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 they, they all out with it, honey. They all out. They putting. They bringing the. They bringing the sheets to the streets. Right. So yeah. It's so it's it's definitely a culture shock. It's definitely a culture shock. But it's like. They bringing the property it, value it, down. They they are they are but 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 this is what I this is what I say about that. It all goes back to how I feel. It it goes back to uh, the sixties when you talk about like the nineteen sixties when you talk about the when all the women were trying to fight for their rights to be treated equal, like the female equal liberation rights, you know, and stuff like that. So all of that kind of trickled down into that because women wanted to be treated equal, like in the workplace, right? Right. So if the women were being treated equal in the workplace, and that means the companies, they had to hire these women. So when they end up hiring these women, that was less jobs for the men because, you know, the women was going to go harder. The women are gonna go harder because now they got something to prove, right? right. So there's so there's less jobs, they're putting the men out of work. So now um the women are making more money than the men. But not only is the women making more money than the men, now the economy has to raise now because it's two incomes. They gotta raise it to adjust it to the two income family household. So now the woman and the man, that's the way the economy now. You can't survive without the woman and the man working. So now the woman and the man has to work. To wow. support the ho- the household, but I said I was to say this: Who at home raising the kids, Brad? If the woman, if the mom and the daddy got to be at work, who at home raising the kids? The, the kids got to raise themselves. Yeah, so they, we can't they, fault these kids because they're raised themselves, and this is a situation that we all put ourselves in. So we have to take some accountability for that. I and agree. that's my take on it. I agree. Uh, one last question. Uh, mm-hmm. Is there anybody in the full nine music that you listen to that you like that you jam? Who do you? Absolutely. I don't know how to. Uh, it's a couple of people. I love. I love Zazie. I love uh, Zazie. I love uh, Thirty Three Trapper uh, as well. I like uh, Hevo. I like Brittany Renee. I love K Young. And my girl Syntax doing her thing uh, yeah. as well. So it's it's a J Biggs. It's a couple of people doing their thing that I that I really just really respect. So um, it's a couple of people that I love. And like I say, the AAMP boys. I'm I'm I'm, I'm, I'm I listened to some of their material uh, day for yesterday. Man, they had me out of my body. Yeah, it yeah, I heard. Lasted I heard my whole work shift. Yeah. So and I'm waiting on you to send me some new some new material, bro. So I could be jamming it. Yeah. <laughs> as well. well before. Also, uh, my my music twin Rose Gold. I want to give him a shout out too because he got a he got some um um uh, uh, a project that he just released too, and he just shot a couple of videos. So Rose Gold, uh, Jacoby Dumas, y'all can check him out on YouTube. Yeah, shout out Rose Gold. I ain't hollered at him in a while. Uh, yeah. Please tell everybody your social media and where they can follow you. Okay, so I'm um, uh, Rakesha M. Duraso, which I'm just going to be changing soon, but that's on Facebook. And then it's Medusa Reincarnated on Instagram. And then it's Medusa84 on um, TikTok. So follow me on uh, TikTok, Instagram, and Facebook. 
And you be doing your thing on TikTok too. Uh, I appreciate you, brother. I appreciate you. That's that's getting you a whole lot of attention. I see that. I appreciate you. Well, uh, I thank you for uh, being able to talk to me because we've been trying to get you on here for a while. Yeah, and, I know. <laughs> and when that mu- music come out, we're going to have to do it again in support Absolutely. of the music. Um, I thank you once again. You're welcome. And uh, my name is Cornbread Capone, and this is Unpopular Honesty, the home of brutal honesty and real hip-hop music. And we will be back. <laughs>